Hey guys, it's Harold. I am starting uh, a video series this year called Tuesday Talks. They will be out on Tuesdays. Duh. Uh, and so we can talk more about health and fitness information uh, and make it as accessible as possible. Joining me for the first, uh, on the inaugural Tuesday Talk, uh, is probably one of the most influential people in my life for the last year, uh, Amanda Wheeler, uh, who's joining us from Kansas City. Hi, Amanda. Hi! What's going on, girl? <laughs> oh, I'm trying to set up shop here. Yeah, I'm how's figure out my life? How's life down there? It is so relaxing that's, compared to Kansas. Uh, compared to New York, it's very relaxing. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. What kind of stuff are you working on in Kansas City? Um, right now I just signed on as an independent contractor uh, at a local gym that used to like be an old bowling alley it is it's sweet it's like shag carpet disco balls and stuff like that so i'm independent contracting and i got some training set up and i just started some group classes um with some people that i knew here from before so that's kind of how we're kicking off that's, 2015. that's awesome yeah yeah what kind of when you're training what kind of stuff are you going to be working on with people right now and like the classes of swings goblet squats push-ups planks back to the basics kind of like mff Fuck yeah. Right? Back to basics in 2015. Um, so basic uh, movement patterns to start this crew. Um, and then we'll get a little bit more advanced from there. That is awesome. Uh, that sounds like, I mean, I've known you for over a year now. Uh, but that sounds to me a little bit like your general life philosophy. Like, yeah. start with the basics and then move on to the advanced stuff. Yes. <laughs> start with the basics. Relationships, start with the basics, then move on to the advanced stuff. Yeah, I think that eventually, like, there's probably a world in which uh, somebody has, like, an ongoing public relationship with their goblet squat technique as much as they do with, like, their significant other. So true. No, it is true. Right, Al, uh, when you start this, this program that you're starting, yeah. what's, like, to you the most important thing for people to focus on when they're getting into a new exercise program? Um, that's a great question. Uh, quality of movement... And uh, breathing to start yeah. quality movement breathing. So we had actually we had our first class today, and uh, I gave just a whole thing about like doing things fast. It doesn't mean good. It just means mm -hmm. fast. So yeah. it's just like doing things to the best of your ability, and you'll get the 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 byproduct is gonna be like you're gonna be hot if you're moving beautifully, right? So it's like getting your body moving properly. Right. So. Yeah, moving properly and uh, and then breathing. Can you elaborate on the breathing component a little bit more? Uh, on the breathing component. Well, when I was in New York and I was hanging around with all you crazy fucks. Can I say that? <laughs> yeah, you can say that. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, when I first came in, uh, you specifically, Kyle and Liz Messina, um, you know, got us all way turned on to breathing and, and uh, PRI. Um, and... When I went to see, uh, I saw Bill Hartman doing an assessment with Mark Fisher yeah. um, at IFAST when we were at a performance uh, conference. And, um, you know, I was not a huge believer. I was like, okay, yes, breathing, yes, it's our functional pattern that we do. It's one of our first ones. But uh, then I saw Bill assess Mark and have him do some stuff, and I was just, like, blown away. Um, so I was like, okay, like, there definitely is something to this. So uh, my goal is to explore more of that this year. Oh, awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I've been having your reset up. Like, we'll do some, like, breathing resets just to kind of start, just to get people kind of relaxed and ready to roll. But that's, like, the extent of my breathing knowledge. Uh -huh. And uh, my goal is to learn more about, uh, you know, this thing that we do every day in life. Awesome. What uh, What's, like, the what's your go-to breathing reset? Right now we're just doing a belly lift. Awesome. It's, like, belly lift breath. I, uh, I think that since I'm putting this on YouTube, I can do this and link to a belly lift breath video. Uh, oh, cool. Hopefully that works. How long is the workout? Like about 20 minutes. Um, and then by the end of the week, we'll get up to like maybe 30 minutes. Yeah. For the rest as we get. But we start with, I mean, it's uh, probably like a 7 to 10 minute warm up. Cool. Um, just to get the body going, doing some breathing stuff in there. And then it's like, it'll end up being maybe about a, between a 30 and 40 minute workout as it, gets, as it gets started. Nice. That's awesome. And then what kind of stuff are you doing in your workouts now? In my specific workout, yeah. like my personal workouts? Yeah, what's Amanda Wheeler doing? My specific wor workouts, I'm actually doing this program with uh, these people that I'm doing it with. That's so awesome. it is like, yeah, it's like three kind of like class type uh, cardio 
class, like with kettlebells, three days a week. And then I'm doing two days of um, full body lifts, one day, more compounds, um, bigger lifts, uh, where it's like two hands on the bar. Yeah. And then uh, the other day is like single leg, basically like single leg, single arm stuff. So really getting into like Bulgarian split squats and single leg dead lifts. And like even doing uh, one arm floor presses or single arm uh, dumbbell press. Yeah. Um, and some landmine. So just kind of breaking up two hands and one hand on the bar. Can you explain those two different days? Because I love that idea. Tell me more about it. So I thought for this, typically like for these like starting groups, because um, I want to get them lifting, I want to get them, uh, I want to get bars in their hands, I want to get them lifting heavy. But at the same time, it's like uh, with form and taking into consideration like um, how their bodies are moving, uh-huh. uh, I don't necessarily want to get people like right on a, on a floor deadlift or on, um, you know, doing like any kind of like, like probably will never back squat. Right. Um, but it's like, I can get, um, I can like play around with like a sumo deadlift or like a Romanian deadlift one day. And then the next day get in doing some single leg stuff that we can see kind of like, uh, where the inconsistencies are in their body. Um, eventually like after these like first few weeks, we can start to load the single leg, single arm stuff a lot more. So hopefully that'll add to like some of their gains, right. um, or some strength. Yeah. That was kind of like my approach for this first like crew that we're doing two hands on the bar for one of the workouts and they're just like big lifts where it's like truly just hinge push squat pull some core heavy carries that's, and like that's it basic yeah that sounds a lot simpler than figuring out the most effective uh bench press variation ever known to man for sure yeah <laughs> i mean we're just getting bars in people's hands to start and um letting them push some weight around that's awesome well then how are you supporting that nutritionally what kind of stuff are you recommending uh, uh, I'm doing a lot of support nutritionally. So um, uh, most people in the in the crew that I'm working with um, want to drop fat. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we kind of went through people's weights and kind of give them some macros based on what their goals were. Um, and so they're going to be logging in uh, my fitness pal. Yeah. We're like a pretty high protein diet. We're eating, I mean, like substantial amount of carbohydrates as well as healthy fats. Um, but they're logging it. And then uh, I give them basic, uh, basic guidelines kind of from uh, – Precision Nutrition. Mm-hmm. So, like the Superfood guidelines from there, which is like great resource. Um, and I think it's just available if you sign up for their newsletter. Yeah. Or if you like sign up, they send that to you just in your inbox, which is so it's like great information to have. Yeah, that's um, beautiful. So based on that, and then I actually been was reading. Um, I just read uh, uh, Lean the Lean Diet, Lean Gains Diet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've been like playing around with that too. Um, so, but so everyone's like blocking their stuff, uh, at least for now, for these first few weeks, so we can uh, make sure everyone's kind of like on the right track. Right. And then uh, hopefully, eventually, it just turns into like, you know, where it's not like counting so much. So I'm like not really into that. Like, not a, for me personally, where it's like, I don't necessarily want to count calories. Like, right. I don't. Some people love it. Right. Um, it works for them. It's just, it's a little bit, it's a little bit crazy for me. So, um, but hopefully, they're just learning some habits. Um, as they are like measuring their stuff to start and then eventually they can just eyeball it and it's like, oh, this is how we put them together. It's how we like, pair, you know, that's put awesome. meals together. Yeah. Uh, that's like the, uh, I call it like the, the sustainable approach, right? Where it's not as, as rigid, but once you've got that awareness, you then are empowered to go kind of work on your own. It's like, there's two scales that we are then governed by. It's the scale in our bathroom and the scale in our kitchen. Like neither of them should be your boss. You are in charge of those guys. Uh, yeah, for sure. That's actually great. Yeah, for sure. What about uh, like non-workout days? Do you have like your personal go-to physical activity, but you're not really working out? Um, I log in this house somewhere that is the cutest, and uh, I've been. I mean, it's been super fun. Um, just take them out for walks, and we'll actually there's a big fenced-in park kind of by our house, uh-huh. uh, like a school, and so like take them there and just run around with them. I mean, it's really it's kind of like silly, yeah. but like. For me, too, especially being here, like, taking the dog out for a walk gives me the opportunity to explore the city a little, right. a little bit, and then, like, like, go on a field and just chase a dog around, you know? Yeah. Throw balls and stuff. Does, does Kansas City have a big, like, outdoor physical activity culture? We have no idea. I mean, it's like, like, but he's out. There are a bunch of bike lanes and stuff, uh-huh. um, but I feel like drive are as cautious here. Like, in New York City, I feel like you can ride a bike, and, like, people kind of know there's a bike lane. Right. But... And again, maybe it's because it's wind, but like I haven't seen anybody out. Um, but uh, but I feel like the city probably. I mean, it, it could be. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff in the summer that I just don't know about yet. Right. You can explore, and you'll find it, and then you'll make it. 
Now, Amanda, I have a question for you. When uh, okay. when you were getting into like fitness, right? When you started working out, what was like yeah. the one piece? What was like the biggest piece of information that you wish that you had earlier in your career, uh, or earlier in like your training experience? Oh, that's great. Um, truly, the biggest piece because I was like, uh, I had played sports and stuff growing up, mm -hmm. um, but I was also like like pretty chubby. Um, like, then I would lift and, like, you know, but I didn't see the results of that, but it was, like, way before we had the nutrition knowledge that we do now. Right. Um, where it was, like, I was eating spaghetti, bread, and corn that you can't out-train your diet. Now knowing, like, for me personally, like, wanting to lose weight when I was younger, when I was starting, um, is that, is actually probably more so about food, how, how you physically look, um, than it is about like your lifts are about, you know, actually doing other training. Uh, and that sort of reminds me of this, like something I've been thinking of recently where like fat loss or aesthetics is probably mostly nutrition and like not so much about training, like hit minimal effective dose in your training, like really dial in your nutrition and then performance is like the opposite. We're like performance, yeah. like you can go balls to the wall whenever you want, focus on your training a little bit more, enough for nutrition to support what you're training for that mindset, right? Where so many people are training so hard and they want to, sure. they want to out train yeah, their diet and they just can't get there. Physically. But, uh, I had a couple people where I was basically like, where they like needed to lose a substantial amount of weight, like just for their health. Um, and I was like, listen, you could, it's great that they're moving and doing stuff. And I'm like, you could not train with me and like just eat differently. Yeah. You would see more results. And again, movement is good. Any movement is good. But it's like, if they're, wanted to achieve that desired result then it's like that's food right all food uh, which is awesome um and with that uh, i think i'm gonna wrap us up because it's like time for us to eat right um yep yes <laughs> uh, amanda thank you so much for getting on the uh the google hangout and for talking with me today yeah. uh, i have a feeling we're gonna be talking a lot more on this and then uh, Katie and I will be out to see you and Shannon for the fitness summit uh, the beginning of May, which is going to be like absolutely incredible. Yay, I'm so excited. Yeah, it's going to be great. And I'm so excited to use the talk. Hell yeah. Let's wrap this up, girl. Yeah. Thank you, Amanda Wheeler. And guys, thanks for checking out the first Tuesday talk. Uh, we'll have another one next week uh, with a different guest star. I am so excited about it. Uh, thank you very, very much.